Now I want to talk about finding your vocation. You hear this word a lot amongst Christians. What's your vocation? What's my calling? What does God want me to do with my life? It's the great anguish point of so many Christians. And it is an anguish point of so many Christians because our fellowships are not talking about it at the appropriate time and they're not talking about it at the appropriate way. Here's when we should be talking about it. We should be talking about it particularly between the ages of 18 and 24. Because at that point in life, those are when the big sort of life decisions are being made. So you need to be thinking about vocation from 18 to 24. And I want to say right at the outset that finding your vocation is not a two minute job. It's not something that happens overnight. You don't just decide because of a day what you're going to do as your vocation. Blood fire, cool that blood bro, cool that blood. So, what do we do to find our vocation? I'm going to give you a, a system of meditation by which you can track the course of your life that if you follow it and it all lines up, you will find your vocation. So listen carefully. There are seven gates. And I want to stress that all of these gates need to open. If any of the gates are closed, it is not your vocation. Gate number one. Do you desire to do it? Do you desire to do a thing? I'm going to use myself as an example. I have the desire to evangelize. That is my desire. I've had it since I first became a Christian. It's been on my heart to see Muslims come to the faith. That is my desire. I have that passion. I think about it. It burns within me. It's something that's always there in the background. I get excited when I do it. I feel a little lost when I'm not. I have a desire. Gate number two. Do you have the opportunity to do it? If you don't have the opportunity to evangelize, you're not called to be an evangelist. Though I would suspect that the conditions preventing you from evangelism are that you are locked in a cell in a prison <laughs> and that they don't let you out and you get no chance to witness to anybody. Do you have the opportunity to do it? Gate number three. Does your doing the thing make you a better Christian? You see, if by doing evangelism, I was to become a worse Christian than I am when I'm not doing evangelism, then that means that doing evangelism is not my vocation. Doing your vocation should make you into a better Christian. The fourth gate is, does it contradict the scriptures? In my case, there is the Great Commission. We are commanded to evangelize. So it doesn't contradict the scriptures. But if you have the desire to do something, you have the opportunity to do something, and doing something makes you a better Christian, it obviously can't contradict the scripture. You can see that three and two are linked together. Sorry, three and four are linked together. The fifth gate is, are you any good at it? There's no point saying, I have the vocation to be a worship leader if you can't hold a tune, if you're musically deaf. There's no point being an evangelist if you can't speak, you can't communicate, you can't make people see your point. Are you any good at it? The sixth gate is do the saints confirm it? And what I mean by this, what I mean by this is the council of saints, those people that you go to for spiritual advice. 
when they know you and they hear about your vocation? Are they saying to you, brother, sister, I think you're onto something. I think this is a good idea. You might be onto something here. This could be what God is calling you to do. Or are they saying to you, brother, sister, this isn't you. Are they trying to discourage you from following something that you think is your vocation? The final gate, sorry. The final gate is does the world oppose it? Do the forces of darkness in this world, the forces that are invested in evil, that are invested in sin, that are invested in the principalities and the powers of this world, do they oppose you? If they do and they resist you, it means simply this. It means that you should see it as a confirmation that this is something that you should be doing. Perfect. Yep. I want to stress these points. These gates all have to be open. If any one of them is closed, then it means that whatever you think is your vocation is not your vocation. You have to follow your vocation. We've got someone who's projecting their voice. I'm just going to wait for the police to shut them down. Bear with me one second while they do that. Okay, there we go, the police has stopped. So, the next point that I want to say to you is that lots of Christians fall into the trap of thinking that their vocation has to be connected with the institutional church. You couldn't be more wrong. Your vocation can be anything godly. Anything that doesn't contradict the faith can be your vocation. Do not think that you have to make money out of your vocation. The reality is that making money is something that only occurs when a society values the thing that you're doing. Society values nurses and doctors, so we pay for them. Anyone who's lucky enough to have a vocation to be a healer is lucky because they can make money out of their vocation. But there are many things that God can call you to do as a vocation that neither the society nor even the church values. In which case, don't expect to be any making any money out of it. You should still follow it anyway, though you're probably also going to need to have a job. So your job and your vocation may not be the same thing. I know Christians who are called to politics. They're called to invest themselves into a Christian political party that the church has not yet learnt to value. So they can't make a living from doing that like the Labour can or the Conservatives can. So they have to do other jobs as well as be involved in politics. I also want to say this. A sad truth is that lots of Christians miss their vocation. It is possible that you will miss your vocation. One second, one second. However, do not fret. God can make all things work for good and God can do the good, can use the good that you do even if it is not your vocation. If you are in any doubt about what to do, follow the biblical mandates. The biblical mandates are sufficient if you don't know what your vocation is. It takes years to find your vocation. Not days, not months, and it is not a whim. It is a lifetime's worth of reflection. So, so, any questions on that topic? Okay, I'm gonna take a break, gonna get a cup of tea, and then I'm gonna come back and do some more talks. God bless.